This isn't even the right kind of helmet. Let's do this! Vroom. Today on What to Watch Before You Die, it's the era-defining Easy Rider. The film follows Peter Fonda as Wyatt and Dennis Hopper as Billy, two Harley Davidson riding hippies as they set out on a cross-country trip to New Orleans after completing a drug deal in Southern California. Here's why to watch. Forty-five years ago, in 1969, Easy Rider debuted in theaters across the country. That same year, the world experienced Woodstock, the Manson murders, and the Stonewall riots, not to mention putting the first man on the moon. If God did not exist, it would be necessary to invent him. It was a time of change and upheaval, sometimes through drastic measures. And as we see in the movie, not everyone was ready to accept it. Throughout the film, the traveling duo are confronted with bigotry and hatred from small town America, and are forced to contemplate whether they'll ever truly find freedom. All we represent to them, man, is somebody who needs a haircut. Oh no. What you represent to them is freedom. What the hell's wrong with freedom, man? That's what it's all about. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's what it's all about, all right. But talking about it and being it, that's two different things. I mean, it's real hard to be free when you are bought and sold in the marketplace. The indie film's box office success was a testament to a counterculture movement that was not going to back down. The film became a national event, with audiences returning to the theater over and over, cementing the film's instant cult status. It became a rite of passage. Seeing the film said something about who you were and what you stood for. Thanks, I got some uh, store-bought right over here in my own. No, man. This is grass. You, you mean marijuana? This certainly wasn't the first motorcycle movie, or the first hippie movie, or the first film as social commentary, but it was the first film to bring it all together, creating a narrative that truly struck a nerve with an entire generation's desire for change. If you checked out Breathless, you can click here to watch my rundown. You'll definitely see some similarities between Easy Rider and the anti-Hollywood, big studio rebellious film techniques of the French New Wave. Easy Rider's production schedule was said to be more like a drug-stimulated, rambling love fest. Director Dennis Hopper had no real idea of where they were going or what was coming next. The movie's narrative reflects that lack of true direction, with characters that come and go and a loose, episodic structure. The sort of experiences you'd have in the real world, rather than the typical storyline you'd see portrayed on screen. Laszlo Kovacs' cinematography bucked convention with lens flares and natural lighting. Believe it or not, lens flares used to actually be considered a filmmaking mistake. And also pulling from European film styles of the time, we see jump cuts and non-linear storytelling, as the film's rough cut was allegedly three hours and needed to be cut down dramatically. The result was a film that has no real story, but a definite strong message. We blew it. What? <laughs> what, what, what? That's what it's all about, man. I mean, like, you know. I mean, you go for the big money, man, and then you're free. You dig? <laughs> we blew it. Only two years prior, with Simon and Garfunkel's soundtrack for The Graduate, had the world been introduced to pairing popular music with film. Another believe it or not point for those of you who are better versed in newer films. Easy Rider does that brilliantly. Don't that joint, my friend. I don't know. Maybe I was born in the wrong era, but anytime the band's The Weight comes on, it's like my entire body relaxes. We get the song The Weight pretty much right off the bat, with Fonda and Hopper riding through a picturesque desert, and it's like, okay, I can get into this. I pulled into Nazareth, was feeling about half past dead. The film strides along to the likes of Jimi Hendrix, The Birds, and Steppenwolf, immediately taking the audience to another time and space that you can only really access now through classic rock radio stations. Unlike previous motorcycle films, Fonda and Hopper and their third co-writer, Terry Southern, created leading characters that weren't total gangsters. 
Yeah, we see the duo smuggling coke across the border from Mexico, but they don't end up getting into trouble for being bad guys. They're faced with adversity simply for looking and acting different. To make their plight even more relatable, the narrative introduces the well-groomed George Hansen, played by young and just so cool Jack Nicholson, who happened to get a Best Supporting Academy Award nom for his performance. George's character perfectly illustrates that it's not just the freaks who get in trouble with authority, it's anyone who tries to rattle the cages of establishment. Indians. And maybe that's why this movie spoke so effectively to an entire subculture. No matter what your background, your cause, your interests, Easy Rider put on screen what audiences couldn't put into words. Check out Easy Rider and let me know in the comments below if it makes you want to ride motorcycles, do drugs, have lots of sex, or say F you to the man. Subscribe to Cinefix for more What to Watch Before You Die every Thursday. Follow me on Insta at MacWall and hashtag What to Watch Bud to suggest more movies. Born to be wild. Seriously, every time. What were the shoes there too? Born to be wild.